Fantex has something huge, but small. Designed to bring a balance of performance and cost to gamers, the BG5 M.2 SSD from Kioxia is an obvious choice. The BG5 SSD utilizes Kioxia's fifth generation 112 layer BICS flash 3D memory and uses a DRAM-less architecture leveraging host memory buffer technology to maintain affordable power and efficiency. And for those needing a more robust storage and professional use, Kioxia CD7 features PCIe Gen 5 and 32 giga transfers per second, perfect for enterprise and data center solutions. To see the complete list of storage options from Kioxia, whether it be for everyday use in PC gaming or professional enterprise and data center solutions, follow the sponsored link in the description below. We're pretty big fans around here of the Fantex Shift series. Uh, Phil ran that in his, do you remember the build we did where it was a surprise for him and then um, gave it to him? That was the shift. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Phil got it, stupid. It wasn't for you. That's not nice. <laughs> anyway. You guys remember that build? Well, the Shift XT, which is new from Fantex, uh, was announced at CES in 2022 this year. Uh, it's not, it's been out for a little bit now. This is our first time taking a look at it. it. It's even smaller than the regular Shift, but here's the thing. It's a convertible. Yes, we've seen plenty of modular convertible cases before, but this is ultra tiny, but it can be less ultra tiny and a little bit bigger than tiny, if you want it to be. So one of the things that we love about the build quality from Fantex is everything is this anodized aluminum. Look at that. This is the black one. They do have silver. I thought I asked for silver. Whatever. I digress. They have kind of a gunmetal color and then they've got this black. So already like, look at the amount of vents in this thing. <laughs> vents there, vents there, vents there, vents there. It's just, you want a PC in your vent? <laughs> we got you covered. Um, accessory kit is over here. Also comes with the little instructions here to show you how to expand it because here's the thing, it does go whoop, beep, whoop, whoop, depending on how you want it to go. For RMA request, eh. You know what? Every other company needs to take a cue from Fantex. Their manuals are among the best manuals you will ever find in the industry. Full color, glossy print, translated properly, I'm telling you right now, they have spared, they spare no expense when it comes to their manual writing and I absolutely appreciate that. I also love that they give you just this kind of a quick start guide showing you immediately how to get all the panels and stuff off because that's the part that leaves people that are idiots like me going, huh, how does this work? Okay, so the front pieces here are magnetic. Oh yeah, look at that. And aluminium, aluminium. So if you're like me, I never use front panel connectors for nothing. I, I well, I might actually be using it for VR here pretty soon, but, um, you can just be like, push it down and don't have to see it. And there's your power button. Slide the locks open. <gasps> Slide the top panel to the front and lift. Amazing how well manuals work, huh? So now you can start to get a little indicator of what the inside looks like right there. We're supposed to be able to increase the height. And by doing that, would allow us to actually run a 240 AIO on top of this bracket. So if you wanted to run a 240 AIO, you just increase the height. Easy enough. Same thing over here. Do that. So if you don't want the mesh panels in there, I guess you could go without them and see what that looks like. Yeah, then it's just, just open, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. So you've got this thumb screw right here, which of course is put on by Zeus himself. Nope, it's not captive. Okay. Slide forward and up. So there's your chassis. And here's your bottom piece, which has rubber feet on them, as you can see, a little standoff. So you actually get some ventilation through the bottom because there is a gap there. So now we would be ready to build in it and have access to all sides of it. But I love this because now you can work on the system with all those pieces aside and you don't have to worry about scratching any of it. Now, if we were to undo these two screws right here on the back, it's two, this now, ta-da! There's our riser right here, which is already pre-mounted. Here's our power supply extension cable. So here's your front panel connectors. They're already shortened, as you'd expect them to be for mini ITX, that way you don't have a ton of excess. There's RGB right there, so I'm assuming this front does glow RGB, and that RGB 
has both the proprietary Fantex connector if you're using Fantex fans or Fantex parts or a standard three pin ARGB. Let me get a graphics card and see what we can fit in here because check this out. They give you a triple slot right here. So I'm curious, can we fit a triple slot in there? First, I'm gonna take out this drive sled, which is toolless. And then if I wasn't gonna use that, I would undo these screws too, just so it's even cleaner in there. Nicholas, what's the biggest 30 series card we have on the shelf, sir? This is our Gaming X Trio um, 3090, the th MSI card, which I firmly think is the biggest card of the generation, at least that we have on hand here. We don't have as many cards as y'all might think we do. I only have like nine or 10 of each. Just kidding, I don't actually have that many. I've said no to almost every card people have sent our way, or tried to send our way. No, you need to sell that card to someone that needs one. But the fact that it has a triple slot doesn't even matter, because remember my complaint about 30 series cards all being triple slot, but only having dual slots on there, which make them sag. Now look at the size of this case, right? Come on. I believe, oh my goodness, <laughs> dude, it is officially in. I love when it's just big chunks of computer parts. Ah. So then if we were to extend the height and we have a AIO up here, that would give us just that much more exhaust. Even if we just extended the height for our fans right here, I would clearly want, look, I would clearly want these fans exhausting all this heat from this graphics card, just right out of the case. So it pulls it in from the side and then exhausts it right out the top. So look at that. That is just, I am very happy with the way that looks. It would be a bit of a tight bend on the cables right here. Cause as you can see, it doesn't have a lot of room to clear. So if you look right here, you only have maybe 10, 15 millimeters worth of like curve. And, and if you look at the back here, it quite honestly, it cannot have been any longer in fit. Yeah. <laughs> Was that five millimeters? No, that's probably like two. Look, look, I'll make a touch, watch. <laughs> See? Yeah. That's the biggest card I have on hand. And as you can see, it does fit in there. And I like the fact that there's still all this gap on the bottom. It gives some of the air that has to come out the bottom side of the heatsink somewhere to actually go. So, I, I mean, I don't personally feel like I would use this in its smallest configuration with passive cooling only, but if I had to, at least the top looks like this, right? Another little, Attention to detail, I didn't even notice. If you look right down in here, between the graphics card and that motherboard tray, there's a big rubber pad. So before I show you how to adjust the top and the bottom heights and such, um, I wanted to kind of show you some other things regarding the fitment that I didn't even realize till right now. This, this grill, that makes sense for blow through style cards. Like this card kind of sort of has some slits in there, but think about the Founders Edition card, how it has a fan that blows right through. So rather than blowing right into a wall, it's got some perforation here. But because you don't want it to also be stifled by the power supply, you can see the power supply has like a solid 20 millimeters of gap between this tab and this wall to have an air gap right here. So the power supply is actually pushed out to this edge and you can see that by these four screws right here. And then that obviously plugs into the bottom of it. So you have a gap right here between the power supply and that fan. So then if you were to even have the fan on that side of the power supply, it could just continue to capture that air and push it down. Now I wouldn't necessarily want to heat up the power supply with hot air. You could have cold air coming to the power supply this way and blowing down. Um, so you would have the power supply capturing air and pushing down. And then if you had exhaust fans on the top, that air would be captured by the fans up here and pulled up. So you could have this kind of like a opposing flow of air technically but the power supply, considering the fact that what Fantex sent us a 750 watt revolt, in fact, I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now, what that looks like in there so you can see that space. Then we'll show you guys the height configurations. My goodness, I love small builds. I don't personally like have one that I use on a regular basis. I mean, I've, I've got the Corsair builds. I've still got to finish the H1 Star Wars build just to have my, one of my mods finished, I guess, but what's today? 15th, hey, my cables for my personal build should be arriving today from Australia. Um, if they do, then I finally get to finish that build. That's all I'm waiting on. But check this out, look how tiny they are now. <laughs> you can get a thousand watt now in a standard non-L. So, all right, so there's that. Now you can see the air gap there. So you can see the gap right here now. That's pretty big. So any air coming through there from the graphics card would hit that and then would just bounce up. If you're going low wattage parts, like let's say you were putting like a 3060 
2060, maybe like a 5600X or an older Intel that's not hyper-threaded, like maybe 11700K, 10700K, something like that. I feel like you could absolutely just let this be, um, I wanna say passively cooled because it's not, you have active cooler on the GPU, on the power supply and on the CPU. But I think you could just let radiation handle the heat, um, expel or exhausting of the case. But when you have a 3090 and if you're going with a high-end CPU or anything with a high core count, I at the very least recommend going with the air fan configure or the air cooled configuration. Now I'll show you how to do that real quick. Oh, and did I mention the cable management at the bottom? Look at this under here. So you've got this guy here, which is just a tab, as you can see, locks in right there. And then any cables that you can run underneath the case can absolutely be used to make things nice and tidy. And they give you a whole, whoops, on this side. So you can run things down here, have it go through there and back up through this hole to your motherboard if you want. And in the manual, they show you quite a few ideas on cable management for this case and how they recommend cables be routed. And I think that's a pretty big deal because the challenge of building in any tiny case is cable management. Look at how much room you have between the power supply and the top of this. Remember, any fans are going on the top. They can't go on the bottom. So you have all this room right here to route cables. That gap also allows you, if you want to utilize that, if you have a card that doesn't need the flow through design to be you know, not blocked off, you can run the cables a tight bend down through here and then along the bottom to your motherboard and to the graphics, the graphics card comes right off the top, obviously. So there's a couple different configurations here. You've got what they call their air cooled condition or, uh, so, okay, so you've technically got three. You've got your standard, you've got air cooled and then you've got liquid cooled. Now liquid cooled would be specifically for like your AIO. And they sent us this Glacier 1240 here, which I'm not gonna install right now. But um, in the manual, they do actually show it installed. And I'll show you that real quick. That's what I love about their manual. There it is right there. It's the exact same cooler. So you can see they're showing you where the tabs go, like where to route the fan cables. It's in a different page. See, right there. They show you where to route the cables, how to mount it down, where to put the tubes, where to put the zip ties, even where to zip tie the tubes to, which is right there. So you can zip tie the tubes up out of the way. I mean, everything in this manual is amazing. But now we need to put it in a new configuration here. So to do that, you leave the bottom mounted where it is. This is the front right here. And the top piece has a couple of different tabs that you need to move. So if we're gonna go air-cooled configuration, that's this one right here, which gives you enough height adjust, like addition to put in a 25 millimeter fan or two of them, 120s or 140s. So if you're gonna go straight air-cooled, I would absolutely recommend going with two 140s, just higher CFM. Uh, lower noise, higher CFM, greater transfer of air. Here is your um, liquid-cooled version, which gives you enough additional height for a 30 millimeter radiator as well as a 25 millimeter fan. Um, I think I would stick with a 240. I'm not sure if a 280 fits in here. I don't think so, just based on where the holes are. You could fit the fans. Their hole here is still optimal for a 120. A 140 would block a lot of that off. But what you do is you have to move these little tabs right here. And you see these got, they've got these screws. See how they're just kind of loose in there? So I need to reduce or take off that screw right there. Let me get my short stubby screwdriver or just use the one they provide with you or with their case. So you take the screw off, which is the stopper, and you just put it in the second hole. So these screws right here now slot into this groove right here. So by moving the screw position, changes how far down it can go. But the rear, this is where you slot this guy in. And you'll notice before I do that, there are two screw holes, one there and one there. That is where those two screw tabs will mount down. So. This is really hard upside down. I just want to point that out there. So that goes in there. That was a satisfying click. Yeah. I'm not going to screw it down because I'm not going to leave it in this config. I need to change it again. But then I didn't put the side vents in there because I want you guys to see it. So there's that there. So that's the, and that actually looks really satisfying because those fans are almost centered. Actually, it's not centered just enough to make me kind of cringe a little bit. However, I think a standard height, uh, card would probably put those centered. So now if I want to go with the collar standoff, it's the same thing, put this guy in there. And then we have to change these two screw positions 
to the lowest. So let me do that real quick so you guys can see. And then that will basically be a wrap for this particular case overview. I love the way this case looks. Fantex, their design team, in my opinion, is just on it. It filigrees, I mean, I'm a function and form guy, like I kind of want both. Phil, I would I would think leans towards form before function, which is perfectly fine. That's why stuff exists that meets that category. But Phil and I agree an awful lot about Fantex's design cues. They are just different, they're unique, they're not copying nobody, they're just doing their own thing and it works. So if we go like this, there. So that's as big as it can get. It, it's weird, it looks so much bigger already just like that. But I just left the cover off the front so you guys can see just how much air is in there, like airflow and height you can add for putting a cooler in there. And then when you're done, you just put the magnetic cover back on and then you've got a water-cooled, high-end build if you want, that's expandable. But if you have a lower end build right now that didn't have high you know, wattage parts and need massive cooling, you could start super tiny. And then if you wanted to add a bigger graphics card, an air cooler or a water cooler later, you can. That's what's cool. I love modular cases like this. They, they don't require you to have to go in there and just completely change. You're not stuck. You don't have to buy a new case if you want to expand it. In this case, you could stand, start standard, go with just air fans on the top and then go to an AIO if you want to. So anyway, there's our first look. This case has been out for a little bit. Um, I'm really glad that I decided to take a look at this because I wish it was the gunmetal one. I truly do. The gunmetal in, in the Fantex Evolve series is my favorite looking case of any cases we've ever taken a look at. Um, but I think, this, I think this deserves a build. But it deserves a build that's used somewhere. So I gotta find a place for it first. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Links are down below. You guys can check it out. And as always, We'll see you in the next one. And now the worst part of every case review, I've got to put it back to the way it started.